Hello and welcome to this week in Metropolis. King P here and Studio 7. Welcome to another episode of This Week in Metropolis. Uh, what I wanted to start with was uh, something that was very much in the news um, regarding a good friend Elon Musk. Uh, <laughs> good friend. Good friend. Um, he texts me all the time. Um, about his, it's, it's something, I don't know if you remember in the Joe Rogan podcast, it's, it's something he mentioned during his podcast, um, which was a business that he runs among his hundreds of other businesses that he's got um, called Neural Link. Um, and in this, in the interview with Joe Rogan, he did touch upon um, the, the potential of this thing, which is basically it's proper sci-fi stuff. You've got something that connects to your brain and potentially it will allow you to connect your brain to a computer is the 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 crazy sort of concept of it um when he was talking about it on on joe rogan though it was something that you you know you just thought well yeah fair enough that, that sounds great in concept but how long until that happens but a couple of weeks ago he did a, a presentation regarding the actual technology and it's something that he believes that will be um, put in place, uh, I think it's uh, later is it later this year or um, early next year, which is nuts. It's, it is mad. I mean, we spoke about this um, last week and just the thought of it always hurts my brain, just thinking about the idea. It, do you know what it makes me think of when, when we talked about it? Do you remember so, the film, um, was it Minority Report? Mm. Tom Cruise, and I just remember that scene. I mean, they had things on their fingers, I think, so it was less doing it with mind. But it just makes me think, like, controlling um, computers and things like that. Like, yeah. just doing your day-to-day. -day. I mean, uh, I mean, we're probably talking, you know, tens, in the tens of years, you know, probably 20, 30 years, I reckon, before this is kind of like a, just an everyday thing. Yeah. Um, probably longer than that to be on there. Something who knows, but who it's knows? it's it's mind bending. Just thinking that you could have something connected and you could just think about doing something and it it translate onto a computer. Well, and the, the idea is that so uh, at first that uh, the idea is really that you if you have people that um, don't have control in their limbs, for example, that no, they've had an accident or you, you know they've had. Um, some sort of disability that it will enable someone to remotely control a computer with their mind mm. and and how it works is that it's the, the the pictures that they they showed in the presentation is it's almost like an old style sort of bluetooth headset it just hit, sits behind your ear um but linked to that are very thin threads that actually connect into your brain and they're thinner than a a, a human hair so they slide them into the relevant parts of your brain um, and you can then communicate. And the, and the, the odd thing is uh, that, that it links via Bluetooth to an app. So it, it, you can sort of uh, essentially, yeah, it, 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 it's crazy say, saying it. But oh. the, 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 the thing, what, what they said in the presentation is apparently, and, and there's some um, slightly grim pictures, uh, again, of uh, sort of a rat with a, a USB interface um, sort of in its head and, and things like that. Um, but apparently they have had a, a, a monkey um, has been able to control a computer already um, with its brain. Um, so it's it, it's working to a certain degree, but they, they've not experimented with a, with a human subject. And I think that's the next thing to do. Um, but that understandably they need the the uh, approval uh, of as such to do it mm. but i think it, you know i guess if someone's in a situation where they don't have use in their limbs and it's it, this could be a um a lot or, or i guess they can't communicate uh, this is a real 
game changing thing because they would literally be able to to talk. Mm-hmm. Um, and and the, the 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 crazy thing is, I think one of the, I don't know the exact quote, but I think um, in he stated in his presentation that in theory, in the future. If let's say you or I, you and I had that technology fitted, because of the nature of how it connects to your brain, we'd be able to communicate telepathically. So it's, it, it's madness. Yeah. I mean, I mean, credit to um, I mean, it's obviously not just Elon Musk, but he, from from our discussions and well, just generally what he posts on Twitter and things like that. Yeah. Like the guy's a genius. Like some yeah. of the ideas, it's it's not just. Because when you think about some of the ideas that he has, they're crazy. Yeah. But the the mad thing is, is that a lot of them, he seems to have an idea of how he can make it a reality. Yeah. And, and this sort of stuff, don't get me wrong, is not something too far fetched. I think it's it's um, something that you can imagine is possible, but how you go about making it happen. I mean, like, yeah. you know, he's, he's not like a, um, a scientist who, who surely knows about where to connect microscopic threads to certain parts of the brain and yeah. things like that. You know, there's people behind the scenes that are doing all that yeah. stuff. And I think I've not watched the presentation yet. Um, but the, in the presentation, he does have, um, neurosurgeons and people yeah. like that, that, that are, sort of working in the business i think mm-hmm. he looks at it from a from an engineering perspective but they have got people that are, are experts mm. in, in the field the, the thing f- which i think makes it even more sci-fi is if, do you remember in agents of shield when uh, agent coulson um is in tahiti mm. and he's got that robot sort of fixing him Mm. And, you, and you've got all these these little fingers sort of like... And he uh, keeps having like flashbacks, doesn't he, I think? Yeah, so. that's it. And he remembers it. It, it sort of um, fixed his brain as such. To fit the threads, they've got a robot, which again, in the picture, looks exactly like the one from Agency <laughs> Shield. <laughs> they just uh, edited to the video. Yeah, Elon was watching that for thought, oh yeah, that's how we'll do it. Uh, and yeah, it, it's... It, but I'm guessing it's because of the... Uh, you know how sensitive it is to do it. They, they've, yeah, they, they've got this robot thing that plugs it in. I, I guess the other thing with this is if he can do all the the groundwork and get them initial kind of designs and ideas out there. There's nothing stopping like Microsoft or some big tech firm, you know, computer firm, to go. We'll we'll buy this off of you. Yeah, you know, what I mean, you, you provide us with that, or or even go right. What are they doing? Let's do our own version of it. Yeah, and so you know, as long as it's the sort of thing that takes off, which just thinking about it, you know, I don't know how that you'd go about, it, but think where this could lead to. Like we, we're talking about just general, like um, using a computer to you know thinking about typing a document or something like that or sending an email think of what this could lead to like gaming and things like that like you could end up years down like you know i'm talking 50 years we could be playing computer consoles with all this sort of stuff going on yeah. and, you know almost be watching call of duty while playing it using our mind like look left you know but you haven't even got to say it do you know what i mean it's just like you're there That's i mean it. we've got the vr stuff going on which is incredible but this is this is, I think, another level to that. Yeah. Well, he, he he said that he wants it to get to the point where it's no different from having sort of laser eye surgery, for example. You know, they, they get it to that point where it's that easy to do mm. um, and eliminate the need for an aesthetic. You know, they, they would be able to do it in a way where you, you just go in the shop and get it done in your lunch break and it's fitted. But uh, part of the idea, but he talks a lot, sort of generally about artificial intelligence and the dangers of it or whatever. Mm. But I think to a certain extent he sees it as a way of, you know, it's the ultimate way of humans ever uh, evolution in the sense of competing with AI rather than sort of fearing it. You're you're combining yourself 
mm. with with the machines. Yeah. So I was just going to say, there's always. I've I've seen it in too many movies where AI then becomes smarter and then takes over. And if you're merging or a uh, what's the word I'm looking for, um, a hybrid of both. You're like a cyborg. Aren't yeah, you? yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, it'll be it'll be when we start kind of you know oh you've lost that limb we'll just replace it with a mechanical yeah. one things like that that's you know which I'm more excited about to be honest because I think now yeah you know, prosthesis is is so good now or, or getting so much better I think we probably will get to a point where losing a limb probably isn't a you know a, as big a deal as terminate you know. level. Yeah, exactly. You, yeah. you can do anything with it. You can do things better with it, and, that, and that's that's just like in that. Um, do you remember in the trailer for Cyberpunk? Was it Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven or whatever it's called, the new game, mm. where someone's sitting there and they're, they're sort of, oh yeah, I can fix that for you, or I can you can mm. make your eyes better and so on. But yeah. It's, it's, well, and a bit like the Matrix, where they just used to kind of download yeah. knowledge and things like that. I mean, and that's that, exactly that. what you could do. It, because that's what Elon said in that Joe Rogan thing is, you know, it's the concept of rather than that it's how he described it was at the moment. And I've heard this concept before from other people. At the moment, we're all cyborgs to a certain extent, because what people are doing more and more is rather than relying on your brain for storing information, which we do, but the, what you do more than anything, if you or I want to know something, Google it. We'll Google it. We'll go mm. on our phone. And that's what we rely on for our information. But the, the thing that makes it slow and, and the bandwidth, as he describes it as, is you have to think, I need to know this thing. I'll then get up uh, my phone, you know, no, no, open it up, type in the thing, or say Google, blah, blah, blah. It finds the information, gives it to you. If it's directly in your brain, it's milliseconds. You would think, Google, what's this? And Google tells you straight in your brain. You know, so you're, you're <laughs> <laughs> speaking up the interface. But, but then how would, I mean, or maybe I'm thinking about it in too much detail, but how would whatever this is beyond your ear, <coughs> excuse me, um, how would you be connected to the internet? Is this going to have like 4G, 5G built yeah, into probably, it and things like that? I think, I think so if I've got to buy a contract with data. Well, that's the, the weird thing, is it? At the moment, it's connected to an app, I think. So yeah. you've, you're, you're Bluetooth sort of connected to, to an app on your phone. So that's the extent it is. But I guess, yeah, why couldn't you? You could then just be mm. wirelessly linked to something. I think, I think what I really want with all this is for Elon Musk to be the first person to yeah. uh, try it beca because um, he's, you know, he's... Um, uh, he's very good with all these ideas, but actually putting it into place and, and yeah. actually experimenting. Don't get me wrong, like, I mean, experimenting on animals, that's a, that's a dodgy subject for us to touch yeah. upon. But do you know what yes. I mean? Like, he should be one of the first ones to go, yeah, I can do it. Look, ask yeah. me any question. Yeah. The one thing you touched upon there uh, a couple of times was about, like, um, laser eye surgery and things like that and that sort of tech... I actually heard, and it's funny that you brought this up today, but I actually heard on the radio um, on the way home from work today that scientists have invented a new type of contact lens where you, if you blink twice, you can zoom. That's madness, isn't it? I mean, it's weird that we're talking about this because that's, again, it's like, I guess that makes me think of, um, uh, was that a, that was Mission Impossible, I think it was, where... Um, it was Mission Impossible, and I can't remember which one it was. Ghost? What was the Ghost? Ghost one Protocol? Was it yeah, something called? like that. I think it was that one. And and they had special contacts. I think it was Simon Pegg um, had these contacts in. It might I might be wrong with Simon Pegg, but whoever it was. And he was reading these documents, and every time he looked at them, he blinked twice, and it took a, like a screenshot of <laughs> And then these were linked up to a printer in the room next door. So they're getting all these codes or whatever, 
which was then just printing them out, and he just look at the next one and go, okay, double click. And they obviously the bad guys didn't know, but the um, I've literally only just looked this up, so um, uh, it's a breakthrough. Science in scientists uh, at US uh, university could take years to develop into real into a real product, but for initial kind of stages, um, yeah, they've worked on uh, the material is. Um, thicker so it's obviously got all this tech built inside it but i mean i don't i hope it's not like wearing goggles but <laughs> i was gonna say i imagine at the moment when they're developing it looks like you've got i don't know uh, 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 i'm trying to think of an example like yeah. a, a beer mat on each uh, eye at the moment because it's not um it's yeah. not refined uh, the actual the actual information says the focal length is modified by making the lens material thicker or thinner in right. the same same mechanisms as muscles adapt the lenses shape uh, in human eyes um I, but but yeah i mean just think of that i mean it's quite basic really but for people with poor vision yeah um or that just like looking at things from far away um <laughs> you know, <laughs> You know, <laughs> peeping toms and you know, I mean, still have a field day, but, uh, but just crazy little things like that in technology is just like, yeah, mind blowing. Mind. It's absolutely incredible. And uh, I'm sure they see you know, these things do often go from sort of concept to reality very, very quickly, don't they? So, God, as long as there's the investment, the thing. Just to touch upon the sort of connected stuff to your brain thing again, the the, the biggest thing, or, or after I like reading the comments on articles when you read, because often you, know, you you get some really good insights. And one of the things that someone brought up in the, the particular article was apparently on but what Elon was doing with the, the neural link presentation was to um, basically tell everyone about it. And if anyone's an expert in that field for them to get involved, Mm. So, you know, come and join us, come and help us create that, which is great. But one of the jobs apparently was uh, sort of a, a cybersecurity expert or something like that. Mm -hmm. And the, one of the comments opened up that, you know, that, that thought of, hang on, if they're, they're doing, you know, sort of like looking for security people, I imagine if someone can hack your brain. Because, be, you know, if you think you're connecting your brain to the internet or any sort of network, mm. That, that's the possibility, isn't it? That you can, someone can intervene and, mm. and someone can um, take over that. So, yeah, having you, um, I just imagine you, you know, you're, you're twitching because someone's... Um, someone's ripping all the information out of your mind. So, yeah. Someone's just sending, you know, memes to, to your, your brain and you can't, yeah. you can't think about anything else. That's the thing. There's always, like, different... I mean, that's quite an actual, quite a clever... Um, idea that someone's thought of there yeah i mean there's there's going to be some downsides to things and that's what they've got to kind of work on haven't they yeah interesting or, or alternatively the, the the again just uh, looking at the, the comments here um about it being hacked and, and whatever the, the other example someone's given is uh, where we saw spider-man far from home mm. um mysterio he, he was projecting people into people's you know, world mm. and no one knew what was real or what wasn't. Again, you could potentially do that. Mysterio, yeah. He was good, wasn't he, in uh, that Matrix... Uh, not Matrix, what film did I say it was like? Um, <laughs> oh, um, uh, Inception. Inception, yeah. yeah. Superhero meets Inception. Nothing like Inception. But, uh, that's yeah. Yeah. Really I mean, yeah, just technology. Well, on 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 this, we always end up talking about superheroes. Mm. Um, I I saw, and and this is good uh, for any sort of cosplay fans or wannabe superheroes. Um, Marvel to celebrate its 80th anniversary is um, producing a Captain America shield, um, full size, exact replica of the real thing. Not made of vibranium, no. Just, oh. uh, just to you know, highlight that part. I probably so, won't get it then. Yeah, don't. Yeah. don't um, 
<laughs> Wakanda didn't want to be involved in, in, no. in the manufacturing process, unfortunately, with this. But yeah, it's, it's 24 inches in diameter and it's got the adjustable arm strap so you can wear it sort of in the same way as uh, Captain America and so on. I, I, I just think it, it, it looks really, really cool. But it's, it's one of those things that you'd buy and think, well, well we could do that now. What's, what's that retailing at? Well, believe it or not, I, I was thinking, so I was reading this and, I was, and looking at the pictures of it and thinking, that's going to cost an absolute fortune. Mm. But I don't know what it's made of because it only cost $100. $100? Which, $100, so, which, mm. you know. Well, I mean, loads, loads of people will probably buy them, yeah, because, I mean, if it's probably going to retail, what, 80 85 in the UK then, mm. if it's $100. Um, well, you have to buy it from Hasbro's online store, uh, um, which is where, now, I remember years ago, Hasbro did, um, do you remember the um, hoverboards from Back to the Future? Yeah, yeah. I think it was around the sort of anniversary, it must have been around the anniversary of Back to the Future, and you could buy a replica of that and that. So they, they do some quite cool movie related things on there but a hundred years i'm sure that probably means it's made out of plastic doesn't it or something like that but um i think the paint finish makes it look really realistic Mm. oh if they're if they're affordable like that they'll sell like hotcakes yeah exactly easily everyone wants to pose around and pretend they're captain america don't they Mm. it's funny you mentioned um cosplay then because um there was a, um, a Comic Con in London, I believe, yeah. this week. Um, which, London uh, Film and Comic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, shout out to um fan of the show, Adam Wheeler, who um, was there with his stand for um, the Secret Protectors. I think they had some good, um, good feedback to that. But obviously, I've, I mean, having gone to a Comic Con in London... Um, I dressed up as Superman and was a hero there. I got this Superman outfit, which was um, quite flattering, actually. Um, <laughs> fake muscles. Yeah, fake muscles. I looked, I looked exactly the part. And amazingly, I didn't see another Superman there. And I had, I had people coming up to me with their kids saying, can, can my son have a picture with you? It was amazing. I felt like a celebrity for the day. Um, Isn't that weird thinking that your picture, your picture is potentially in children's bedrooms all around the UK? Yeah. All around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Superman. Um, yeah. Especially if like I am like a big deal in the household, like the whole oh, yeah. family is a fan, and then there's like a big canvas with me and their child. Yeah. Mum, be... was that the real Superman? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. It's I look legit, so... Um, oh, there you go. <laughs> um, well, you, you did touch upon um, Spider-Man and a bit of Marvel news there. Um, we obviously had comic, the actual big Comic-Con in San, San Diego. San Diego, yeah. yeah. That was a couple of weeks ago. And there was all sorts of um, news regarding Phase 4 of um, Marvel's next set of movies and TV work and uh, just wanted to get what, what are your thoughts then on um, on the thoughts of, of um, what, what's coming up for, the, for Marvel because we've got you know one of the big talking points was um, Natalie Portman coming back who I know you're a big fan of yeah I'll, I'll watch anything to be honest that Natalie Portman's in so I've, I've really no problem about um, what, what they've announced with that mm. I guess that you can I don't know, with the phase four, I think it's, uh, I've got sort of mixed emotions with it. With Because it's the the last sort of a set of films was so mature, and the, the mature, I mean, in terms of the story is established, you sort of, sort of knew how it was go, growing and you was keen to find out what was going on. And as they introduced more characters, you were thinking, oh, how'd they fit into it, especially with the end credit scenes and that. Mm. Um, in a way, for me, it's part exciting because you've got all of this new stuff coming out and it's not necessarily, I'm sure it will incorporate into what we've seen already, but hopefully it will then set up new stories. Mm. Um, but also there, there are ones which 
I don't know. We, we, we spoke about, I think, that, you know, WandaVision, for example. Mm. It's How not really do? one that I'm particularly excited about. So mm. it's it's not one, uh, I don't know whether that would just fall into, you know, one of the many, many Marvel film, uh, Marvel TV shows that we've had, or mm. whether it will be anything more significant. But like we said, how does Vision fit, fit into it? Yeah, well, I had that conversation today, actually, with one of, one of my mates, um, and he was explaining to me that in the comics, she can, maybe I've got this wrong again, but she can so create her out. own... She can create her own realities, alternative realities. So, so maybe that's how he can be in it. Maybe I don't. So, so the takeaway is she's insane. <laughs> and imagine he's still alive yeah. for a whole TV series. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, but yeah, there, there are question marks. I mean, the 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 thing with Thor that we were talking about with Natalie Portman being the female Thor. Yeah. Um, uh, Mark, who I spoke to, he he raised a good point in the fact that I think some people are probably not too happy because it feels like the whole female superhero thing is kind of being a bit forced. But this is actually something that happens in the comics, and we've read about it on on certain sites. And and it is something they're following. They haven't just gone. I know what we could do. We can make her the female Thor. Yeah. So so that's a positive. Um, interesting. I, guess, I was just going to say, related to that though, again the the again the way sort of I, I see it a little bit. I think it'd be different if I mean she was in the first and the second one in in sort of a, a fairly prominent role, wouldn't she? Correct me if I'm wrong. But then the other ones, she had a much smaller part. She well, she wasn't in the third one. No. But this, but this is again what what I was told today. She actually didn't want to be in it anymore after the second one. She'd had enough of it, mm. uh, which is interesting because if she'd had enough of it, and now they're saying, "What if we offered you the role yeah. of female Thor?" And then she's like, "Sign me up." Oh, so, well, she said, "How much?" And yeah, 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 I'll do that. Yeah, but but what I was going to say is it, if. And they led up to the fact that you know she, she was a strong character in it, but they led up to the fact where you know she's with Thor and she she's you know becoming more of a warrior, and then that's then a natural extension to the next film. We think, oh right, she's now reached that end goal of of doing it, whereas she disappears without a trace, and then all of a sudden, oh yeah, she's got a hammer as well. It, yeah. it's, you know. I, I, to be honest, I can't even remember how they signed off with her. I feel like maybe was she left on Asgard? Because she got ill, didn't she? And then they sort of repaired her. Was that the same? Yeah. I can't remember. But they mentioned her. Well, she was, there was obviously the clip of her wasn't there in um, Endgame because she didn't um, Rocket have to get something out of her which was injected into her. Yes. One, one of one of the stones or whatever. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Um, but no, it would be interesting, won't it? I, th- I think the best news coming from it all was the fact that Blades, obviously, um, yes. going to have a reboot. The only question marks over it are the, um, the ratings for it, because obviously the one that we would have grown up with, with Wesley Snipes, that was an 18, I believe. Mm. Um and um, this one, Disney, uh, it's probably going to be a 12, I'd say. PG. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all pretty with fairies. Um, yeah. But I only thought about it today, actually, because we've obviously touched upon in conversation, and this does come back round to, to Blade, the latest series of um, True Detective. Yeah. Which had... Um, Oh, God, I forgot his name now. Um, I'm good for We, we had, had Mahashala Ali yeah. and... Stephen uh, Dorff. Stephen Dorff, that's it, yeah. Who was, was in Blade. Who was in Blade. And yeah. I wonder I, I wonder whether he had a word with him there and said, you'd be pretty good as Blade. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. But I think he's going to be awesome as Blade. I do I, think. I think he's a brilliant, yeah, casting for it. Because in a way, he's similar, uh, uh, you know... It, you forget that um, Wesley Snipes was a pretty cool actor. When he did Blade, he, he was he is a, is a, a cool guy. 
Mm. And I think he's very much of, of that sort of ilk, isn't he? He, mm -hmm. he, will, he will do really well at it. 100%, yeah, because he was in all sorts of good films around that time, Snipes. Yeah. What was that, um, like, feud? He wasn't in Demolition Man, was he? Was he the bad guy in Demolition Man, or have I made that up? Yeah, he was. Oh, what a great memory. Um, great memory. Yeah, I do remember, because he was, like, a future. He was he was a criminal, wasn't he, I think, or something, and he was yeah. awesome. God, that's a terrible film. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should do that as a feature on one of our future shows. Ter worst films. Interesting. Sandra Bullock was in it as well. Uh, I don't remember in it. Oh, I don't uh, No. A worst film, which he reminds me of. Did you ever see, if we're completely digressing, um, Time Cop with Jean Claude Van Damme? Yes. That is yes. a much worse film than. Um, that wasn't based on a game, was it? Or was the was um, I'm sure there was a game like Time Cop or something like that. Probably. It's been the arcades. I don't know. I remember them having, but it's like this big sort of portal thing that they kept. They didn't he sit on the seat and they shot him into this portal or something. I think I've blanked that out of my memory. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I saw it in the cinema. Uh, George. Showing your age. Um, oh, anyway. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Moving I think. On. Yeah. So, that, in terms of uh, hopefully slightly better quality movies than um, Time Cop, the. If you remember many, many years ago, I can't remember when he actually did 13 years ago, apparently, um, Morgan Spurlock did Super Size Me, where mm. he was um, spending, I can't remember how long he did it for. Was it a month he, he ate McDonald's for every meal? For like days and, or something like that, yeah. Yeah, and, and sort of uh, monitored the effects it had on his, his body and so on. Um, which, as far as I remember, that, you know, it, it ruined him sort of in terms of his health. But I think after the programme, or after the, the um, documentary, mm. I think it, it brought in some positive changes in terms of McDonald's and that. I think they did reduce their portion sizes and, and improve the ingredients and so on. Mm. Um, but he's doing uh, a Super Size Me 2, um, which was announced in the, in the past couple of weeks. Um, and what the focus of this is going to be on is um, unlocking the truth on food that's deemed to be healthy or organic and, and the, the things that um, food companies that or, or particularly sort of, you know, fast food restaurants and that do to make things appear, appear to be more healthy. So I think it'll be a real uh, interesting oh, yeah. insight again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so, but he's not going to be eating it for a month, or no? What he's doing, the, the twist, he, he, I think he's looking into um, when you watch the trailer, he's looking into different companies and what they do. Um, but his idea um, is to set up a restaurant that does things in the right way, and I think he's completely healthy, and you know, and how he can actually go about running a business and doing it in that way. Mm -hmm. um, it's focused, uh, I think, uh, mainly around chicken. It's called Super Size Me Too, Holy Chicken, um, because I think he says in the trailer, one, you know, the most popular takeaway foods is is chicken, I guess, with some guess chicken it. chops and, yeah, yeah. you know, that, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but what, one of the interesting things that you see in the, the trailer um, and I don't know it, in terms of the context of what, who does it or whatever. Um, but they're, they're showing you about how to make food look potentially more healthy. And they've got this chicken breast and, and they're painting grill marks on it. So, so it looks like it's been you know, cooked on a, a, on a particular grill to make it more appealing. I've, I've, I'm sure I've read about things like that before. Yeah. So, and maybe I discussed this with you ages ago, but there was an article about like advertising just in general, like when you see like at Christmas or whatever, mm. um, and you have like, you know, whatever supermarket chain or whatever are doing this, you know, turkey and roast and all that. And they will literally like paint it. Mm. So it looks like the best, most tastiest turkey you've ever seen. Potatoes looking amazing. But actually, it's just been cooked normally and they've just, yeah. you know, they've, they've cut, edited it or coloured it or whatever, yeah. put on some um, some sort of paint to make it look immaculate. Um, 
that's Great, so like yeah. you say, false advertising. Exactly yeah. that. Because when you cook it, it doesn't look anything like that. Um, of course it doesn't. But but the way they do that, yeah. Interesting. So, yeah. Should, do you think be... though, do you think sorry to interrupt, do you think it's big enough to be in the cinema? I don't know. I can't remember whether well, it says here in, in the article I read about, it, it says, watch the official trailer of Super Size Me Too above and look for the film to hit theatres and release digitally on September the 13th. Mm, so, so maybe it's in selected. Yeah, mm. that's it. But otherwise you, you'll be able to buy it on the, in, in September. I can't remember whether the first one was in cinemas or not. Mm. But it's, it's a bit of an odd because it's... I feel more, like it was. Yeah. yeah. As it's more of a documentary, it's a bit of a funny one, I guess, isn't it, to... Um, to have like that, but yeah, it should be a, it should be a good re- uh, watch. He, he's um, he reveals how poultry is raised, recipe development, designing a brand, location scouting, and more. Mm. So yeah, and so, interesting that it was thirteen years ago because I was just thinking it's one of them ones that we've talked about before. Like, how long do you leave it before you do a sequel to something? But yeah. thirteen years. But I guess if he's been looking into this for such a while as well, he's probably covered it over quite a, a period of time yeah i guess so. i don't know what he um to be honest i don't know what he's done since then because you know, i only really know him from from the thingy. One, yeah. yeah and that's it hmm. it appears like he's he's done he, nothing no no he he did where in the world is osama bin laden was his second documentary <laughs> yeah but Fights against terrorism, 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 and argument <laughs> from both sides. He directed the Simpsons 20th anniversary special, apparently. Oh. Um, Freakonomics, um, which I think I've seen that documentary, Freakonomics. Um, there's a there's a book of the same name. Yeah, so he did quite a few things. He's been a busy guy. Yeah, it's, we've just not seen any of them. So there you go. That's just, it. just an absolute random one. Just you mentioned he's done an episode of The Simpsons, which is a bit weird. Yeah. Um, you've just tweaked my mind in that. Did you did you see Ricky Gervais has done his own episode of Scooby Doo? Has he? That's yeah. A weird thing. I, I saw it on Twitter the other day, and he's um, he's in the episode. Right. And there, there is Ricky Gervais humour, but obviously uh, on a child level but there's yeah. there's almost little nods in it that you think that's i get that because that's ricky gervais yeah but you check it out on youtube it is funny that's weird mm. yeah it's, it's strange is it because he's a fan of scooby-doo or is it he, he just decided he was gonna do it i wasn't sure whether it was real when i saw it yeah and i was like no it's, like, i was watching it and then a friend texted me said have you seen this yeah it's um it's a bit bizarre to say the least Okay, well, um, I think that is everything for this week. Um, are we, are we, we're saying this is the, the last episode of this series, Matt, aren't we? Of this series, I think, because uh, we've done 10 episodes now, and we, we could uh, try and do it as a, se- a series each time. What what um, difference next series will be, I don't know. But maybe we'll do it all in uh, the form of song. Or in a different so, language. On a di- we'll, we'll learn Mandarin um, before the, yeah. season two. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if um, you want to follow us, find us on uh, social media. We are on Instagram and on Twitter. And you can find us on the podcast. You can find us on Spotify, on Anchor, on Apple Podcasts, on Google Podcasts, and many other platforms. Um, so, um, yeah. Enjoy. And uh, we will speak to you again soon. Goodbye.